They are living in the village of Ngui Tui, to the south of the Quang Bin province in the sand desert directly on the coast. It is one of the country's poorest regions. Every other day, this woman goes on her way through the hot sand. She's two kilometers there and two back again. She's been going this way for years. In her baskets, she always brings back a few things. Sweet potatoes, sometimes cucumber or a small pumpkin, rice, and little meat. The girls of Ngui Tui call her mother. She takes good care of them all, like a close relative. Notika is her daughter. At 21, she is commander of a coastal battery. Thirty-seven girls serve heavy guns. They've learned to defend their village against attacks from the sea, just like men. During a naval bombardment of the village, these young Vietnamese women were faced with an American destroyer. That was in the summer of 1968. Formerly, I used to live in great hardship and poverty. We have little fertile soil here in the village, only sand everywhere. The small piece of arable land we possess was not enough to feed the children. I gave birth to eight children. It was because of hunger that I had to bury five of them. Today, we have a fisherman's cooperative. The whole catch is distributed fairly among its members. Our life has improved. In the rainy season, we channel fresh water from the stream into the sand of the beach, so we can grow sweet potatoes. 
I have always said to my children, you must study diligently. We can only help drive away the American aggressors and work for a better life if you know a lot. Often, I remember the words of our Uncle Ho. There is nothing more precious than independence and freedom. I brought up my daughter, Nuti Khan, this day. As a commander of the village self-defense unit, she was even commended for her courage. I am proud of her and the others because they have so bravely defended our beloved village. The village community commemorates its dead president. The village, Guitui, is situated in the south of the Kwangbin province in the sand desert directly on the coast. Everywhere in Vietnam are to be found the witnesses of a barbaric war against women and children. The town of Nam Din in the Nam Ha province was for the most part destroyed. This worker's settlement was built by the People's Power in 1958. then the House of Culture of a Nam Din Textile Combine. Here, where formerly concerts and feasts were organized, the women weavers today meet for their daily physical exercises during the break. My name is Dao Thi Hao. I was born in 1938 in the Nam Ha province. I've been working in our factory since 1956. When the French left North Vietnam, they had taken the most important machinery so that we could not go on producing. We were faced with a great many difficulties. I said to myself, the factory is ours today, so we are working for ourselves. At the beginning, I operated nine looms, finally 24. My colleagues did not believe me. I patiently explained everything to them. Finally, my working method was applied everywhere in the weaving mill. In 
1964, the American aggressors started their destructive war against the North. Our weaving mill was cruelly bombarded by them. It helped me very much to cut off the width of cloth because part of the loom had to be evacuated. We went on working with the rest of the machine. The slogan then was, protect the people, protect the machine. During the raid, I ran over to the anti-aircraft unit in order to help the soldiers transport ammunition or help the wounded. We have had good successes during the four war years. We have become a brigade of socialist labor. I have a friend who is fighting far away from me at the front. We are firmly resolved to found a family and to build a happy life together after beating the enemy. <laughs> the weaver Dao Ji Hao forgot to mention something. She's a hero of labor. country, the Kaobang province, works a young woman, Dr. Lei, a gynecologist. During the American bombing raid, she worked in the southern provinces to study the psychological effects of the war on mother and child. I started studying at the Hanoi Medical School when the USA extended their war of aggression to the whole of North Vietnam. Originally, I come from South Vietnam. I lived in the liberated areas there. After completing primary school, I had already taken part in the struggle against the French colonialists as a nurse. When peace was re-established in 1964, I came to North Vietnam. At the beginning of my course of studies, our school was evacuated to a neighboring province because of the air raid. Today, my work is concerned with the protection of mother and child. My special care centers on pregnant women and young babies. I have been assigned to work with the national minorities. We had a great many difficulties in overcoming obsolete customs and manners. Among the people in the high mountains, I did not immediately encounter full confidence and faith in science. 
Even today, some people there will believe in spirit. Life here has changed fundamentally. I am very happy to have contributed a small share to these changes. Through my work, I have come to love even more my brothers and sisters of the national minorities and also the work itself. Dr. Lay is married and has two children. Her husband has been separated from his family for the last five years. He's a frontline fighter. Women of Vietnam, that is a hard life. On their shoulders rests the whole burden of war in the hinterland. They make roads under the scorching sun. They build dams and railway lines. They stand in the water of the rice paddies for hours. They are strong, but also very grateful. A primary school for adults. They are between 20 and 30. They were all members of brigades of the youth organization and on missions in support of the front. Here they're making up for what wartime life could not give them in their childhood and youth. My name is Nguyen Thi Kim Hue. I was born in 1945. My parents died early. I was then four years old. Because there was a war on, I could not go to school. I was happy when there was peace in the North in 1964. The cooperative was founded and I became a member. For the first time I had an opportunity to attend the school and I completed the first form. I was then 18 years old. When this newsreel was made, she was 20 and a member of a road builder's brigade. The order to Kim Yue and her comrades was to build and maintain a strategic road for four years. In those hard years, each of us went on educating herself on her own. We used every spare minute when there happened to be no raid to learn, and we organized this properly, either with a teacher or everyone on her own, or together with her friends. 
We had great difficulties in obtaining writing materials. Every envelope from home was used as writing material. And we used clay to write on the stones instead of chalk. After four years of war, I completed the sixth form. Today, I attend the seventh form. I am now at home because my baby is due to arrive soon. I know I still have a lot to learn. The land near the Red River is very fertile. Maize, hemp, sweet potatoes, oranges, lemons, bananas. In good years, there are three crops of rice. The cooperatives are rich unless the river overflows at high water and swallows the crop. And every rainy season brings high water. The chairman of the Tang Leo party organization is a woman, Lai. She's a mother of two. Her husband, too, is in the army. For the life of the people in our community, high water was often a disaster. So in the past ten years, we have built dams of a total length of five kilometers. Good crops were the reward for our work. But last year, the water rose very high, higher than we had seen it since 1945. We tried everything, but our harvest was destroyed. The party committee called upon all inhabitants of the village to rebuild the dams and to make them stronger. We have thought about many things in our community and are better prepared this year. If there is any danger, one group is always on guard. The second group is ready for immediate action if the dam threatens to break. For emergencies, each family will have a lifeboat. We spare no effort 
and it is not easy for us. 85% of the members of our cooperative today are women and girls. The situation in Tangliu is no different from that in other communities. Its inhabitants are predominantly women and children. And the children have to be educated, and the harvest has to turn out good, and the village has to be protected, and the dam against the river must not be allowed to break. But we always believe when peace has been restored in our country, we will build better dams so that the life of our people will become easier and we can live happily. <laughs>